trigger warning. I was included in this video and I'm certain that the majority of you are thinking, yeah, because that coach drag, you put her down. You made fun of her. I did nothing of the sorts. Coach Greg, in today's video, a sensitive topic. It's about Olivia de Dondre. And so Olivia de Dondre, she's got over 2 million followers and we watched her glow up. And so glowing up, it's just some special term that women like to use to say that they're doing the things that they should be doing. Like, for example, they're journaling, they're writing things down, they're doing work, they're studying, they're basically being a better person. It's like us guys, when we're trying to be a giga chad, we start reading more books, we start studying, we start working, we become a better provider, we educate yourself yourself, we level up, we become a better man. And so glowing up for women, it's when they become a better woman. And so everyone out there, if you're a woman watching this, you should be glowing up. Everyone should be glowing up. Now, the title of this video, it says, How Glowing Up Ruined My Life. And you're thinking, how could glowing up or becoming a better human being, doing the things you need to do to become your best self, how could that possibly ruin your life? Well, here's the thing. If you take it too far, if there's too much pressure from outside sources, perhaps your parents, your friends, your family, the whole world who's watching you, and you try too hard and you set unrealistic examples, it can in fact ruin your life. And so this should not be a video to discourage you from trying to do your best, of course you do your best. She, throughout the video, is going to cry heavily. She's very sad, and at the start of the video, it says, trigger warning. This documentary touches upon the subject of mental health and body image. I was included in this video, and I'm certain that the majority of you are thinking, yeah, because that coach drag, you put her down. You made fun of her. I did nothing of the sorts. Watch my video. It's about 16 minutes long, over 400,000 views. I recorded over three years ago. And so throughout the video, what I did was I gave her tips on how to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of her life. She was doing a lot of the things wrong. For example, starving herself, not eating too much, doing too much cardio, going too hard, and using sugar in gets what? French toast of all things. She literally at one point says, I'm feeling like throwing up five minutes into my cardio because I had French toast for breakfast. And so I suggested she eats anabolic French toast, you know, from my cookbooks. Back then it was probably cookbook one, got cookbook two, three, got so many cookbooks. And so I never put her down, never made fun of her. I gave her encouraging words on what to do to keep the weight off and to not feel so hungry. Remember, she was starving all the time. She wasn't eating all the foods that she liked. And so the diet wasn't working. And yes, she lost 32 pounds, but she was miserable in the process. She could lose some of the weight and keep it off. Notice I didn't say all of it. Notice I didn't say achieve her perfect body. I said, lose some of the weight, a realistic amount so that she's healthy. If anything, I helped her. And so let's watch this video and see what exactly went wrong. Okay, let's let's try to let's try to say some nice things about yourself. <laughs> when somebody says to say some nice things about yourself, it should not take you 10 seconds to think of something and during this process you start crying. Say something nice about yourself. If you can't immediately say something nice and you want to cry, it's not good. It's not healthy. You need to see a psychiatrist, some counseling, because everybody, I don't care who you are, all of you have amazing qualities that no one else should look over. Have you ever wanted something so badly because you felt like it would make your life so much better? How many of you out there, raise your hand, think if you lost the weight, you achieved your dream physique, you would then be happy. I'm sure many of you think this is true. It is not. Achieving your dream physique, getting all the muscles, the definition, the six pack, getting that dream physique is not going to make you happy. The journey towards it, improving each and every day, perhaps every week, seeing the changes both physically, mentally, socially, spiritual, that's going to help. It's going to give you confidence. You're going to feel better. You're going to get that dopamine rush. But in the end, it's not going to make you happy. I don't care how much weight you lost, how much muscle you put on. If you don't change things intrinsically from the inside, it's not going to make any difference. Just because you lose all the weight, just because you achieve that gene physique, it's not going to make you happy. Being happy comes from within. This is just an exterior shell that allows us to walk through and experience this world. How you decide to experience things, it's a subjective experience that comes from within. Just because you have more muscles, just because you're taller, thinner, have larger boobs, perhaps an ass implant, doesn't mean you're going to experience things and be happy with it. Yeah, you'll get more attention. 
more people will have eyes on you. More people will perhaps be interested in you. But it's just like this. Imagine you bought a McLaren. I have a McLaren. It's a nice car. Imagine you open the door and it smells like skunk and there's piss stains all over it. You want to go for a ride in it? I don't think so. Looks nice on the outside, but on the inside, what really counts, it's shit. It's garbage. And so the first thing you need to realize is just because you're glowing up, it's not about glowing up your exterior shelf. It's about glowing up from the inside. The inside is where it counts. I know it sounds cliche, but trust me, the inside is what counts. Don't judge a book by its cover. It's what's on the inside that really matters. What chapter are you in right now? Perhaps it's not going very good. That's okay. End this chapter and start a new one. Every book I've ever read has had many chapters. Some chapters I like better than others. Perhaps everything was going wrong. But remember, you're not stuck in that chapter. And so when Olivia DeAndre says it ruined her life, I would say, yeah, perhaps it was a bad chapter. A bad chapter in your life, but you're only in your early 20s. You 21 years of age. You have your whole life ahead of you. You've just read the first few chapters of your book. Perhaps it never went so well. Doesn't mean you have to continue. You can continue and you write your own script. You are the author in your own book. I don't want to be that girl in college that none of the guys like. But now when the guys at my school and they look at me, I don't really probably find me as attractive anymore. And so dating back six years ago, I don't want to be that girl that goes to college that none of the guys think are attractive. You can see she has acne and she's overweight and she is not happy with her appearance. So she assumes if I lose the weight, clear up my acne, I am going to be happy. Doesn't work like that. There are plenty of people in this world who are far more overweight than her, have far more acne, perhaps can't even walk, they have a disability, they're struggling harder than last time. Those people are happy. Their happiness comes from within. And to the opposite extent, there are people who are beautiful. 10 out of 10. Mind-blowing. Can't believe how good-looking they are. And yet they're miserable. They can't contemplate living on this earth one more day. I just need to get it to the point where people can still look at me and not vomit. I could no longer enjoy the simple things that I used to. These are not the thoughts of your friends, your family, your acquaintances. These are your own personal thoughts that you have put onto yourself. You need to let them go. It's not that bad. Think of it. People out there, twice your weight. They're weighing twice as much as you. Their dream physique would be to look as good as you. You're thinking, oh, my acne and I'm 25 pounds overweight. And they're thinking, if only my acne were that good. If only I could lose as much weight and look as good as DeAndre. That would be my dream physique. They would trade places you in a heartbeat. And so please don't compare yourself to the best looking people in the world. What's happening is today's society, 2024, social media, it's everywhere. You turn on your phone and immediately you're inundated with thousands of physiques that look far better than you'll ever do. And even the people in those pictures don't look that good. They use special lighting, filters, and they don't even look like the people in the pictures themselves. The prevalence of body dysmorphia, it's greater than ever before in both men and women. The thing that hurt the most for me was that the boy I was in love with stopped talking to me. And suddenly we were strangers again. And so she had a boyfriend, she was in love, he broke up with her. Happens to all of us. You guys ever think that I never was in love, that I never got dumped, that I've never experienced a breakup before? All of us have done this. It's part of life. But it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Think about it. Do you really want to go through life and never experience love? Well, part of the magic of being in love is the magic that could go away. That it's temporary. Think of it. Is it going to last forever? And even if it does, what happens when you die? Is it possible they're going to cheat on you? Of course it is. Over 50% of marriages end in divorce. And so what can you do by that? Should you just give up? Of course not. Just because it's not likely that you're going to meet this dream woman that you're going to be in love with for the rest of your life doesn't mean you can't try. And listen, you need to talk to your partner. You need to be educated. You need to be a good communicator. If you just bottle up and you're scared, nervous, you're never going to have fun in this world. Think of this from an abundance mind step. There are plenty of fish in the sea. You really think she's dated every guy out there? This was her soulmate that she met as a teenager that she could never meet another guy ever again, ever? Really? The journey was taking longer than expected because I was struggling with weight loss. 
That's really unfortunate. Anyway, it's okay. Don't lose faith. You're going to get right back on track. And so the journey was taking longer than expected. You know, I only lost nine pounds in the first two weeks. I mean, I'm literally reading the title. I lost nine pounds in two weeks and first week of college. And so notice the amount of stress she's putting on looking perfect and detracting the opposite sex. And also notice she's setting unrealistic goals. Remember what I've always promoted, what I've said in my videos for years? Halfway there to set realistic expectations. But no, Coach Greg, that guy's horrible. He tells people that they probably won't achieve their dream physique, that they might only get halfway there. He says to set realistic examples that you can actually achieve. Oh, that's such horrible advice. Everything I want to do is being held back by one thing, and it's my weight. How many of you think that her life's goals are being held back by her weight? Have you seen her? Does she look like she's 300 pounds? Is she in fact morbidly obese or is she just a little bit overweight? No, she doesn't look perfect. But is she really so heavy that it would prevent her from doing anything in this world? She looks far greater than the vast majority of women out there and she simply wants it too fast. She doesn't want to put in the work. Even if she does develop her dream physique, do you think it should take weeks, months? Or should it take years and or decades? People were getting tired of watching my repetitive failures. I stopped posting on YouTube and decided I would come back to complete my story once I figured everything out and finally glowed up. And so she was posting her results on social media and of course the comments are saying, oh, how come it's taking so long? Why can't you do this before and after transformation in just three months? You're doing it on purpose. You're going slow on purpose. If it was really that easy, everyone would be doing it. Why do people think that losing weight is a trillion dollar industry? The reason is because it's absolutely one of the hardest things anyone can do in their entire life. We are born with ghrelin. It makes us want to eat. And today's society where we don't need to do a lot of exercise, of course, our bodies are going to be overweight. Now, if there's one thing that I would suggest that is the most likely thing to help you lose weight, keep it off for the rest of your life, it's going to be cardio. The more cardio you do, the more calories you're going to burn, the more healthy you're going to be, and it's going to make it much easier to lose weight. The only way to lose weight, I don't care what other people are saying, it's calories in, calories out. If you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight. If you're in a surplus, you're going to gain weight. Now, if you're having trouble with energy, of course, you can take supplements. You don't have to, but this supplement, for example, Geo2 Max, it has NMN, the main ingredient. It's been shown in research to increase your cardio to improve your ability to do exercise, to give you more energy, to recover faster. And so if you recover faster, have more energy, you're more likely to do more cardio, to burn off more calories, to be in a calorie deficit, and it will help you to lose weight. Don't have to get it, but if you are interested, of course, head over to my website, click the link in the description. During this time, I got help from a therapist and a celebrity fitness trainer but none of that worked. Now, for many people, they suffer in silence. She's reaching out for help. Now, remember, this woman has suffered with depression, with mental health issues. It could perhaps stem from her genetics, her biology. It could stem from her childhood. We don't know the traumas she may or may not have experienced, but everyone in this world has been through something, and that has led to you being the person you are today. The humiliation pushed me to such a low point that I thought, I'd rather die than be a failure. Now remember, whatever it takes to spark your interest, perhaps it's a breakup, perhaps it's New Year's Day, perhaps it's a comment that someone said to you and you said, no, today I'm doing something about it. Whatever it takes, use that motivation and do something positive with it. When your feelings get hurt this much, you can't help but become consumed by darkness. And so you have two choices. You can lay down, let everyone win, or you can stand up and do something about it. And so what were the results? Well, she did it. Clearly, look at her physique, the before and after. She clearly made an amazing change, amazing transformation. I was live streaming and then someone commented and then people were like asking, they were like, why do you not look as good as your Instagram photo? And so what happens is she made such an amazing transformation with millions of people taking note that the pressure was so great to keep it going. And so what people would do is say, hey, you look like you've gained some weight back. You don't look as good as you did in those videos. I saw you on Instagram, YouTube. I see you in person. Ah, you're not as good as you once were. And so imagine how hard that is. Hundreds of thousands of people are commenting. You, wow, you're amazing. You look so incredible. I can't believe it. Wow. Every single day, the dopamine. And so what happens when you regain the weight and you lose your followers? People are no longer saying nice things about you. You were addicted to the high when you had lost that weight. 
And so eventually you shut down. This happens to so many social media influencers, people who become popular, the rise to fame, they get millions of followers. All of a sudden people start hating them or perhaps they don't watch their videos. They start making fun of them. They start putting you down. If you rely entirely on that external shell in your body to be happy, you're never going to be happy. Imagine if I only felt good when I'm in bodybuilding shape, doing my poses, front double bicep, doing the poses. Imagine what happens when you're in your off season. You're no longer doing a bodybuilding show and you're perhaps at 15% body fat. What do you think people are going to say? They're going to say you're fat. They're going to say what happened to your abs. And how do I know this? Because they all said it to me. You don't think I've lived through this? Oh, are you the guy that won that bodybuilding show? You don't look so ripped. You're not so big. I thought you'd be much taller. I thought you'd be bigger. And so you're thinking, well, I want that validation. I want people to say how great I looked again. So you diet down yet again. You keep competing. And eventually what happens, you take performance enhancing drugs. Why? Because you want to keep it going. You want to keep the validation. You want people to be talking about you. And so it becomes addictive. How could it not be? Wow, you look so amazing. You look so great. Oh my goodness, you're abs, your biceps, your shoulders. And so you continue to do it. You do it your entire life. Remember, father time has come for everyone. I don't know many people who are in their 80s looking better than they did when they're in their 20s and 30s and so on. I'm not saying not to work on your body, but for the most part, the fact that you're training hard, that you're working harder than last time, that you're eating healthy, doing cardio and so on, that you're studying, that is not just helping you on the outside. It's helping you on the inside. The effort, the determination, the drive to be the best version of yourself, that is an amazing characteristic to have. But do not judge your self-worth based on how you look. Remember, what's on the inside, that is what really counts. I thought I was just keeping myself in check because when you are being the best version of yourself, you just don't let yourself do these unhealthy habits. And so the best version of yourself is not the person that's starving yourself, the person that only eats salad, the person that's doing two hours of cardio a day. That is not your best version. That is you living up to unrealistic standards that society has placed on you that you've decided to adopt. You don't need to do it. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being better than you were. And being better than you were, it's not about dieting to single digit body fat. It's not about that. I couldn't maintain a balance in my life. And as a result, I couldn't hold on to my dream body. Remember, it's all about balance. And if you push too far, you're never going to be able to keep it up. If you're a bodybuilder or a competitor and you diet down for a show and you think you're going to be able to maintain that look year round, think again. You're going to be constantly hungry. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're going to have a loss of libido. You're going to have lower testosterone levels. Everything is going to suffer. And so when she says glowing up ruined her life, it wasn't glowing up. It was putting too much pressure on herself. It's not the glowing up. It's putting too much pressure, setting the bar too high and thinking you always have to be there. You can't always be there. It's not normal. It's not healthy. It's not good. I can feel negative comments so happy with the fact that I didn't reach this perfect version. And so here's another problem. People, they root for your success on the way up. Once you're there, they root for you to go down. That happens in everything in life. On the way up, everyone is cheering for you to succeed. But when you're up there, they want you to fail. People don't like it when you're above them. Everyone likes to be here. People will cheer you up to bring you up to here, but they don't want you to surpass them. And so once you get past them, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to tear that person down. I know what I'll do. I'll call her fat. I'll tell her she has too much acne. I'll tell her she's gained all this weight. I'll tell her she's ugly. I'll tell her she's not funny. I'll put her down. I'll call him a manlet, a midget, a hobbit, whatever you want to do to try to bring that other person down. But here's the problem. People actually let it affect them. How can someone who you don't even give a shit about say something or type something and you actually let that affect you? How does that make sense? Are they your friends, family? Are they anything to you? They're just a comment. It's a comment. Why do you care? Why not listen to all the great comments? Livia's had probably a million comments, maybe 5% are bad. Rather than listening and focusing on the 95% of the comments that are good, she focuses on the bad. And so you can see throughout this video, she's very upset. She's crying. She's sad. And that is because she's focused on the bad. But you have the power. You have the choice to ultimately react to the world the way you want to do it. And then I realized I thought about my subscribers and something like I felt something. I was like, what about my subscribers? I care about them. I'm sorry if it's just going to hurt people, but she cares more about the 2 million subscribers that have never met her in entire life than she does about herself. You need to love yourself. That is what's most important. Who gives two shits about those 2 million subscribers case? Who gives a shit what I think? If I make a video and said, oh, your body fat is too high. It's not healthy. Does that really matter to you? 
What matters to you is how you feel. And that should be independent and irregardless of what everyone else is saying. And so what you should be doing, at least if I were coaching you, is saying that you need to set realistic expectations. Perhaps halfway there. What was your dream physique? You lost 32 pounds. Had you have only lost 16 pounds and kept that off, would that not have been healthy? I think it would have. And because you had achieved that goal, you'd have been proud of yourself. You lost 16 pounds, you did it. Versus you lose 32 pounds and you gain 16 pounds back and you're now miserable. The same two people. One loses 32 pounds and the other loses 16 pounds. The other person regains the 16 pounds. That person is going to feel fat because they gained 16 pounds. This person is going to feel skinny because they lost 16 pounds. The same amount of weight was lost. One person is happy and one person is sad. Do you get it? Do you understand now why I say you set realistic goals to go halfway there? You have to develop that healthy relationship with yourself first before going to chase those external goals in life. I actually think you can chase those external goals while improving your own personal self at the same time. I don't think it's a one versus the other. I don't think you just work on yourself right now before you start studying, before you're reading books, before you go to school, to university, to study, to get a job. I think you do them consistently, always. You take time for both reflect on your day. How could I have done it better? What did I do today that if I had redone this day, I would have changed that one thing. If you do that every single day, imagine how much you can improve. 365 things you could have done better in any given year. Imagine how much better of a person you'll be over time if you simply try. And how hard do you try? You try harder than last night. And you do not need to be perfect. Remember, we're all going to make mistakes. And many of us are going to make worse mistakes than others, but it doesn't mean that that has to define you. You can move on from your past. When we seek validation from others to feel worthy, we start to believe that our worthiness depends on their approval and acceptance. Exactly. Your worthiness, your value does not depend on what other people think of you. Think of this an analogy. If I had a stone, very pretty stone, I'd give it to you. And I say, hey, go and sell this. Go and see how much it's worth. You walk up to someone and they say, hey, I'll give you five bucks for that. It's pretty. I like this stone. You go up to someone else and say, wow, I collect stones. It's a really pretty stone. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I've never seen that one before. And you then go up to a jeweler. The jeweler has a microscope. It's examining. This is the most rare and precious jewel I've ever seen in my life. It's worth two million dollars. And so remember, don't judge your worth based on the bottom 5% of people that are putting you down. There's going to be people out there, haters, trolls, they're going to be trying to constantly put you down. Oh yeah, that ain't worth much. The $2, maybe a hundred dollars. But there are people in this world that see you as the $2 million jewel, that you're priceless. No matter the mistakes we've made, no matter whether or not we can reach a goal, I just hope that you feel like you are enough for once. But one thing you should do is be proactive. Love yourself enough to never give up. We can always improve. And I don't mean the physical. You can't always lose weight. You can't always put on muscle. But you can be a better person, a better friend, a better partner, a better lover, a better boyfriend or girlfriend. You are on your way to self-actualization. You might not be there right now. But you should continue to explore, to learn, to inspire others. And so I'm very happy to see Olivia DeAndre be so open, so transparent to share her message with millions of people around the world so that other people know that they are not alone. The way she's feeling is not where millions of people feel exactly as she does. And so what you need to know is it can in fact get better. Work on yourself. Don't think that you have to beat the expectations of social media around the world. You don't have to. What's on the inside is what really counts. The outside, the exterior shelf, yeah, it's great when it looks amazing, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't define you as a person. What defines you is you on the inside. So there was a guy that I went on a date with two years ago during my glow up journey. I literally just saw him and there was just no desire for him. Access revoked. And so, yeah, two years ago, I liked him so much. I just needed him. Hey, I've glowed up. I now realize I don't really want that guy. She could do better. If you don't want to treat me as nicely because of the way I look, then I wouldn't even want someone in my life like that. And so you see the difference? A real glow up, it's not just how you look on the inside. It's how you treat yourself. It's how you view yourself. She doesn't want to be around people that only want her when she's thin. Why would you want that? You want people that truly love you for you, not for the external shell that you walk in. So what? If you're at 15% body fat or 50% body fat, your friends should love you for you. Whether you're skinny or fat or shredded with biceps, shouldn't matter. They should love you no matter what, and so should you. Whether that is to change yourself or not change yourself, 
your happiness does not have to make sense to other people. You don't have to listen to other people to make them happy. What you need to do is do what makes you happy. Hopefully, you love yourself enough to want to be on this earth longer than last time. To do the things that make you as healthy as humanly possible. And so, I would suggest 150 minutes of cardiovascular exercise a week. If you can do that, combined with lifting weights, perhaps each body part twice a week, and combine that with a healthy diet, then you've done more than the vast majority of people. And so don't forget, if you skip a day, you miss a day, as long as you're doing your best, the best that you can possibly do while having balance, that is enough. You are enough ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Please like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment if you could. Watch one of those two bloops. And of course, the cookbooks, the training books, the circle diet book, life's work, how to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. I have thousands of videos that you can watch to help you on your journey. Don't forget, I give away a free diet and training program. Just become a newsletter subscriber. We have over 300,000 newsletter subscribers. And until next time, I am out.